So this is a video from Superbond's YouTube channel. Superbond's one of my favorite fighters. Love watching him, technically one of the most aesthetically pleasing kickboxers about. And uh, he's got Masato in. He's over in Japan, in Tokyo, and he's getting like, I don't know if it's like a one-to-one -one or what it is, but I, I watched it, thought it was really good. And Masato's a, a legend of the sport. When I first got into kickboxing, or tie boxing even, Masato was winning the K1. He was, you know, he's an absolute legend and he was one of my favorite fighters. So I haven't seen much of him for a long time. I'm not sure if he's still kind of relevant in the media in Japan or what, but he's obviously from a bit of an older generation. Don't think he's massive on social media. But it's interesting to see Supon going over there and getting like a few techniques on him. I thought it was brilliant. So the first one he, he shows is kind of how to exploit the tie style guard in kickboxing, like how ties block. And he, he said he uses this technique to knock out Sagat Dao. And Sagat Dao was a really good Muay Thai fighter at the time. So he's throwing a jab into a lead hook, so doubling up the, the left side and stepping around to the outside of the guard of Superbond to then throw an uppercut. And what he's kind of saying is that it exploits the, the high but wide guard of a TIE fighter. And obviously, especially if a TIE fighter uses a long guard, I think Superbond shows in a minute with the outstretched lead arm, how there's a big gap for uppercuts. It's um, something that the TIE fighters can be quite susceptible to. There's Superbond there showing the outstretched lead arm. But obviously, he's TIE and Masato is Japanese. There's a bit of a translation. Um, What's the word? Lost in translation even. So there's a, I think they've got a Japanese to Thai translator there. The whole video is in Thai with these English subtitles. And uh, so he's explaining like why he's doing it. And uh, yeah, I, I just love the look of this technique. And Masato's looking good as well, man. Like he's looking fresh. It's nice to see a guy that's come out of combat sports that seems wealthy, healthy and happy. I remember at the time back in the day, Masato was driving like a Ferrari man, and uh, that was kind of what led John Wayne Parr and the like to enter these big K1 Max ones. They saw Masato as the superstar, obviously a Japanese promotion. He was a Japanese fighter, so they were giving him a big push, and he was really skilled. He's good looking geezer, and yeah, man, got a little man crush on Masato. He's, he's, looking, he's looking good, man. He must be in his early 40s now, minimum. I remember there being talks in fighting Georgia Petrosian back in the day, and I think he wisely didn't come back for that fight because Georgia was on an absolute tear, dominating everyone. And Masato would just step back, but I think he was kind of half um and ah. Do I come back? Is this a worthy challenge? And he didn't. Smart man finished basically on top when uh, when he decided to retire. So again, this technique jab, left hook, dealing with the the power side punch, so he's, he's throwing it into the right hand of Superbond, and that's enabling him to step round to that side and then line the uppercut up. So he's, you know, he's gonna be directly in position to get the uppercut to split the guard. And he's saying how important the uh, step round is. He's saying that you have to take a step round to that side with a slight pivot as you go around. So beating that lead foot, and then stepping the right leg back and around to create that kind of like 45 degree angle. It's a nice technique, I'll be teaching this to the boys. I like it. I remember Sagadao as well. Sagadao is a very traditional tie, very high elbow guard with the elbows flaring out because when you block a round ass kick, it's easier because your elbows are already in position, you don't have to adjust. So it's kind of like the tie fighters, especially the, the big kickers and knee fighters will generally have really flared elbows with a guard because they're not too bothered about punching. So um, where a lot of boxers will have their elbows tucked into the waist, tucked into the hips, the tie fighters have their elbows flared out a little bit and he's saying like, you know, this is how you can exploit that kind of, that open guard. I wonder what he's, uh, he's really going over this thing. It seems quite a basic technique to me. Like Superbond's literally best fighter in the world, arguably. Obviously not got, this is coming out, this is me speaking after Chingis has just beat Marek Gregorian, officially becoming the best fighter in the world. He's obviously just knocked out um, Superbon. 
to take the, the featherweight kickboxing world title from him. So here he's explaining about how how the guard can be exploited. So Superbond trains in Bukau. Bukau fought Masato. I'm going to say two or three times, maybe twice, with Bukau absolutely thrashing Masato in the first fight, just beating the absolute shit out of him. They got forced to an extra round, which was completely unnecessary because the Japanese just couldn't have Masato lose. They decided, no, he's going to get beaten up for at least one more round. We've got to give him half a chance to knock out Bukau. But then in the second fight, Masato won, and he knocked Bukau down, I think with a straight right hand in the second fight. Really good fight to watch. Um, both fights were worth watching. It was just an era of kickboxing where the, you know, the fights were just all banging. You had Art Koshenko before he was super juiced to the gills fighting at like 90 kilo. You had Andy Sauer, you had Albert Kraus, you obviously had Buk Masato, John Wayne Parr, Sagat Dow. Yeah, it was just absolutely electric. You know, some of those fights, you go back and watch them, those old K1 Maxes. And obviously then Giorgio Petrojan K1 to I think he won the last ever K1 Max um, event and now K1's coming back. Maybe that's why he's, uh, Superbad's gone over there because K1's going to relaunch the promotion, hopefully with the original kind of magic as the, as the first one. Yeah, I don't really know what they're talking about here. I would apply this technique to beat Bukau. <laughs> that was who one said. <laughs> yeah, his book house like Super Bond's Yeah, his brother is his mentor. I guess he's his mentor. And uh I don't know how much he trains with him at the minute, but they've done a lot of work together and very similar styles, beautiful left left kick, beautiful teat. But I just think Bukau for the time maybe a little bit better than Super Bond. More so well his durability, Bukau was just never getting finished. He got finished once by like who was it? Sato, another great Japanese fighter, big six foot three fighter at 70 kilo. But outside of that, Bukau's just nails, absolute granite chin. Still fighting as well, I think. BKB was his last fight, bare knuckle boxing. Subban just saying that Masato is still very strong. He looks in shape, man. Masato's looking good. That's how you want to exit the sport looking like that, looking slick, like a superstar. Don't know, his, don't know his situation, but yeah, he's looking He's looking good, man. He's throwing that left kick, switch into the lead right hook, like it. Even the way he throws the left kick's a bit a bit different. It's not like the way Subban throws left kicks, that lovely turn through on the hip. My side is, it's not flicky, but it's almost like straight up. Uh, he's like probably got a bit of tightness in the hips. He's probably not doing this very often. I'd imagine that's not. But that right hook, his boxing was always what was winning him. His low kicks were brilliant. Masato had a beautiful fast low kick, decent footwork, and he, it was his fast hands at the time. Funny enough, as well, the Japanese were quite secretive with their training, so like there was never any footage really released. And I remember the K1 Kick Fighters documentary that that was put up. You should be able to find that on YouTube. In the Kick Fighters documentary. Uh, Masato and his trainer were adamant no filming, no filming during the training so they were doing some pad work, they were obviously doing some like strategy, maybe working on some tactics and he just refused to let it be filmed whereas John Wayne Parr and all the ties, they don't give a shit, like you film all their trainings, it's generally the same stuff over and over again it's just very repetitious and it's about the ties just being so experienced, so kind of good that they they all find the answers on the night in the ring rather than relying on like a specific strategy. But I think that can only come when you've had as many fights as what the Ties have had, that being, being able to adapt and adjust within the moment. Whereas I think Masato was quite the, te the technician and the tactician. I think the Japanese thought hard about game plans. He's showing a little adjustment on a jab there. It's jab. Trick them, then jab. Oh, so it's a nice little feint where he lifts the arm a bit higher, like you're going to throw it, and then little little pause, and then you jab. A sneaky little one, crafty little trick. 
This is a regular jab. Then he's thrown like a little up jab to split the guard and from an awkward angle, like his fist positions, rather than turning the hand over, he's kind of just creeping it straight up with the thumb facing up. <laughs> this technique seems to be a nerve wracking technique. Jab first, then fake the jab, followed by something else. The technique was quite annoying to the opponent. Can be used 100%. Thank you so much. I'd be interested to see a Masato seminar. That'd be something I'd definitely love to have. Maybe one day if this channel blows up, I'm just gonna go global and go around these gyms and meet all these legends and do some, do some vlogs for you all. Cause I just love nothing more than to do that with Wes or one of my good fighters makes a load of dough and we can just go around and pick the brains of the legends. Yeah, Superbond's got a nice channel, 200,000 subscribers, killing it. Uh, good content and that was excellent, worth subscribing to 100,000%. So do that if you haven't already. Pro striking out, I'll catch you later.